All right, let's make sure this worked because it took a super fucking long time to connect. Yeah, okay. So there's the video there. Um, they, I don't know if what's going to happen with this live stream. If you want me to be uh, honest, uh, it already kind of started giving me some problems right when I hit go live because I use StreamYard. I think you guys can see that I use StreamYard, and um, I don't know if they're gonna fuck with this live stream or not because of what I'm talking about. Uh, so if you're seeing this, it would be immensely helpful if um, you could share this out while I'm sharing this out. Um, because I know Facebook is fucking with a lot of these live streams. Um, so if you guys could hit the like, hit the share, and get this out as much as possible because... Yeah, like I said, I don't I don't know how many how much of this is going to be stopped by Facebook. Um, they, they I'm not going to be surprised if they try to you know um, if they try to uh, uh, censor suppress shit like this. Uh, I'm sharing some stuff out. Like I said, if you can hit that share button, that would be uh, super fucking awesome. Um, and then we'll we'll probably get right into it. Uh, I'll I'll do my shares. I'll do my invites. It usually takes me about five ten minutes to do that sort sort of stuff. So yeah, uh, if you're watching, stick around, hang out, share. We'll be kicking this thing off in just a few minutes. I um, don't really have a staff or anything, so it's just kind of me doing virtually everything to get the word out about things. So, uh, yeah, bear with me for the first few minutes of this, and then we'll kick off into our our discussion for the day for however long this thing ends up taking. Um. I know there's a lot of protests still happening. I know there's a lot of demonstrations still happening. So if you can't join right away because you're out at those demonstrations, I get it. I totally understand. Um, so, you know, catch this later. And when you catch this later, share this around. That would be, that'd be super rad, you guys. I would very much appreciate that. Huh. I feel like we're all feeling, feeling some heaviness, and I, and most of the time I kind of process shit through just talking about it and comedy and all that kind of stuff. So that is sort of what I'm going to attempt to do with this. Um, yeah, so hang tight for just a few minutes. I'm going to share this around as much as I can. Like I said, I don't know what's going to happen with this stream in terms of Facebook keeping this up because of the fact that um, you know, they are they are silencing stuff like this. So that is something that we might have to keep an eye on. Uh, but let me think. Okay. Sorry. I kind of like lost track of where I was sharing this stuff to. Uh, so again, if you are, if you are here, please, please hit that share button. Please hit the like button. All of that stuff helps this video basically get shown to more people. Um, so if you're watching, that would be super appreciative. And I have a few little groups and pages that I share this out to. And then I'm going to also invite a few folks that I know uh, watch this stuff pretty regularly. Um, so then we'll kick things 
get things on their way. This is sort of the, I know this is sort of the awkward part of the show. So just hang tight with me. <laughs> I think there's like one other group that I can put it into before Facebook thinks that I'm not a real person. Okay, cool. Um, and then I'll put it into the event. So if you're if you're in the event, then you get to see the video as well. I, I've been forgetting to do that a few times. Um, so I'm sorry if you if you are if you are somebody that that catches the show from the event page that I've made for these live streams. Uh, I am sorry that I have been um, not posting it in there as much. <laughs> Uh, that's that's on me. That's my bad. Uh, thank you guys for sticking around, hanging with me. Um, this is probably going to this might end up being a, a heavier discussion, but we'll try to add some jokes. We'll we'll do some truth to power shit that I normally try to try to do. Um, I am also trying to like recalibrate my head in a lot of in a lot of ways i was gonna do this last night and uh and i just didn't because uh i was at the protest and things got wild i got out of there before things got way too crazy but uh um you know i still feel wobbly about certain things so uh so yeah so there's that let me invite some folks that i know tune into this thing and you know, participate and leave comments and all of that fun stuff that uh, that the people like to do. Uh, so give me a few minutes for that. And then we will we will get right into it. Um, if you want to invite some people, you totally can. Uh, you can just go over to the side and start clicking invite and invite a few people to watch with us uh and uh yeah if, if any of this starts getting a little little too serious um uh, as as it probably will because of the subject matter we are discussing uh feel free to to say hey i i, I think this is as much as i can uh i can particularly handle right now uh and uh and and you know, if you need to tap out, you need to tap out and I will understand and everybody watching will understand. And, you know, we'll, we'll thank you for tuning in and, um, all of that fun stuff. Uh, let me make sure I'm inviting some of the people that I, again, kind of know tune into this sort of stuff and, um, regular viewers of the show because sometimes it just won't, it, it was already kind of weird about connecting me to the stream. And sometimes it just won't uh, notify people that are already, you know, on, um, that are, that, that do subscribe to get notifications from me. They it just won't fucking tell them. So, uh, yeah. Um, trying to let the people know, like I said, if you want to hit that share button, please hit that share button. Let the folks know that we're doing this. That's all very, very helpful and uh, gets the word out about this thing. So, all right. I think I've gotten mostly everybody that I know tunes into this. Uh, if, if I don't invite you directly, please forgive me. It's I'm, I'm one person and I'm trying to keep up with a lot of shit. Uh, so yeah. Um, okay. All right. I think that's good. Uh, one of the things I am going to do, I have a couple of links I'm going to post ones to my album, which is whatever. If you want to get it, it's a dollar. That's fine. Uh, the other thing is I'm doing these shows, these virtual comedy shows that I know some people that are watching have attended. Um, so I just posted the link to it. And I posted a little message about it. Um, I'm going to be donating 100% of June 5th show to the uh, Minnesota Freedom Fund. And then 50% going forward. 
So um, if you want to purchase tickets to that, and each show is going to be different. Uh, and, I, and I was going to talk about uh, some election stuff, uh, ranked choice voting, third parties, history of third parties kind of thing on, on Friday. But uh, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move that a, a week back. And uh, I think Friday's show is going to be all about uh, the Black Panther Party, which is uh, something we don't really talk about a whole lot in our society. So um, we're we're going to do that. So if you want to grab tickets to that, like I said, 100% of uh, Friday's show is going to be donated directly to the Minnesota Freedom Fund. And then going forward, 50% uh, of all of the June shows will be donated to the, uh, to the Freedom Fund. So, um, yeah, and I'm going to send out a message to all the people that um, that have bought tickets in the in the past to to say, hey, this is this is what we're doing. So it'd be cool if you joined. Okay, um, I think we're ready to 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 do this thing once again. If you're watching, please please share the content out. Please get the word out. And uh, as usual, you guys, I you know, like I'll put I'll put up the comments that you guys leave. Um, but I will read them at the end of each segment that we do, um, because if I read them as I go, I'm going to lose um, my train of thought. Um, I'm going to get lost in this video. We'll start getting meandery and we'll lose focus in what we're doing. So I'll do I'll do what we're doing here, like you see right there um, for every segment. So feel free to leave a comment um, and and keep it keep it engaged so i think we're ready to dive into it i'm really not going to do a check-in because really this whole video is me doing a, a like my my i've checked in with a lot of people and uh we'll see where this goes i do have a lot of um this might get ranty i don't know how long this video is going to be um so bear with me and hang hang tight and like i said if you need to tap out then feel free to say hey uh, I think this is as much as I can deal with the subject matter right now. I'm going to go and do something else. And that's totally cool. Feel free to come back. Feel free to not. But um, yeah, uh, that is that is sort of the disclaimer that I'm going to put out there. Uh, with all that said, let's begin. I think we should start with, uh, with what happened um, and get an accurate view of what happened. Because I think there's a lot of details being thrown around with uh, with this particular case of George Floyd. Um, you know, uh, they I've I've watched a bunch of the footage. I've listened to a bunch of press releases and all that other shit that came out because of it. And here's here's what I've noticed. Here's the recap that I'm going to give you guys. Uh, George Floyd, he was arrested pr pretty violently, uh, top to bottom. I mean, there was just a lot of aggression from uh, the Minneapolis Police Department. Um, there was no real, like, like, they pulled up. I watched the video. I watched both the video of Derek Chauvin and and that other cop, Tio, I think his name was. I can't remember what the other cop's name is uh, uh, um, off the top of my head. I apologize for that. But, um, you know, I watched the footage that we all watched, but I also saw the footage of what led to that. Right. Cause that's always, that's always people. That's what they always talk about is just like, Oh, but maybe he was resisting arrest. You know, yeah, th made that scary stuff. The resisting of the arrest when they're, when they got, when they're bending your arm backwards and you go, owie, that's, that's, re that's resistance right there. Don't say owie. Don't, you know, you gotta keep it. Come on. These are cops. Their jobs are hard. Uh, so I watched it. They didn't do anything wrong. Um, what did they? What did they stop him for? Is he was trying to? Uh, the allegedly uh, was trying to was or, or he purchased some merchandise with a counterfeit twenty dollar bill. To which the normal thing would be to be like, "Hey, did you know that you paid with a counterfeit twenty dollar bill? Where did you get that?" bill from are you making these this instead of they dragged everybody out of the car they they handcuffed him they handcuffed george floyd they threw him over to the side um and uh and you know um then they the second police car arrives so now there's four cops on the scene everybody's handcuffed sitting on the side of the road then they specifically grab george floyd and they drag him up 
and they push him up against the wall and you can clearly see like he is in pain. He is already handcuffed. He does not need to be treated like this. And then what they do is they parade him across the street. And which which is what led to the video that we saw, right? And in the video, the the infamous now infamous video, uh what is George Floyd say? Officer, I can't breathe. My neck hurts. Uh, and, uh, and the, the, there's three officers sitting on, he's handcuffed on the ground, three officers on top of him. Derek Chauvin's knee is on George Floyd's neck, says I can't breathe. My neck hurts. And they're still on him. And the other officer that's standing in front of them goes, this is why you don't do drugs, kids. Like this is some fucking dare presentation, right? Like the most fucked up dare presentation that you could possibly see. Also, dare doesn't work because guess what? Uh, weed's not bad. Marijuana is, but it's getting legalized all over the place, right? Like that's so this drug charge, whatever. What is he on PCP? Prove it. He wasn't on PCP. He just there. There was no drugs involved, and even the person in the video is like, I don't think this is about drugs. <laughs> like I feel like this is about you putting your full weight on a person's neck, like. Maybe fucking don't. This is why you don't do drugs, kids. No, that's not. What are you talking about? That's not what this is about. This is this is about you fucking murdering people. Stop doing that. What they did this for is is a counterfeit twenty dollar bill for a, a, an a, an alleged suspected forgery charge. Holy shit. If Derek Chauvin finds out about Wall Street, boy, howdy, do, do, do I got a bunch of necks you can put your knee on? Because they've they've been running forgery rackets for, for years. I mean, the footage before is basically George Floyd complying with what the cops are saying. He got out of his car. He was answering the questions. He got handcuffed. He moved. He sat down in the corner. He wasn't resisting arrest. So, you know, immediately after this footage gets released, the mayor fires all the cops, which is the right thing to do. But it took them an entire week to charge Derek Chauvin, the guy that was on George Floyd's neck. Um, you know, the phrase I've had it up to here is, yeah, that's about where we've had it up to with this fucking police brutality shit. Like literally we've, because you were on that guy's neck and it took you a week, a week to come out and say, yeah, this dude murdered an innocent person and should be arrested and put in prison on murder charges, F like first degree murder charges. So, the charge right now, which took all week to do, and the mayor came out and he made these speeches. Um, manslaughter and third degree murder is what they're saying. Um, and now there's also some. Uh, there's like medical reports where they're like, well, I don't know if it was Derek Chauvin sitting on this guy's neck. He had some prior heart conditions. And, uh, you know, these pre-existing conditions might have been what did him in. He might have, that pre-existing condition, they have a lot of symptoms. Oh, is one of the symptoms a police officer putting his knee on your neck? Is that uh, part of this heart condition that uh, George Floyd had? It's just like randomly police officers would show up and put their knee on his neck. Is that is that part of the pre-existing condition? Is police brutality part of this heart? Boy, this heart condition sounds real fucked up, you guys. How have we not tried to like cure this heart that the, it just like conjures up violent police officers and uh and murders black people oh my goodness where did this boy where did this pre-existing condition start huh the minneapolis police department by the way uh sees what derek chauvin did as a legal move it's a totally legal thing for him to do by the way uh, they allow this aggressive move. 
the the Department of Justice, the DOJ, and virtually every other police department out there is like, oh no, that's a crazy thing to do. To put your full weight on a human being's neck is like that's like not a thing to do. And the Minneapolis Police Department is like, yeah, but is it though? Like it's pretty. Like it looks pretty cool though. Like have you seen those photos? Like you kind of look like a superhero while you're doing it. You know, like you got that knee, and you're like, I'm I'm a I'm a superhero cop because I got my knee on a bad guy's neck. I'm like a superhero. It's pretty cool. Like it's pretty cool. Everybody else is like, oh my god, no, it's not. It's like crazy. Like it's a super crazy thing to do. Like don't do that to people. But is it? I mean, it's not really a surprise, right? That cops are doing this shit. Look at what happened with Officer Pantaleo and Eric Garner. He it, like he used an illegal chokehold, like a chokehold that the NYPD is told not to use, and he still didn't get fired. He still didn't get arrested. This is a systemic problem, and aggression like this is is rewarded. It's like, oh, you get a desk job. In fact, actually, we don't want to be associated with this bad press, so we're going to move you to a different police department where you get to just restart this cycle of aggressive, violent fucking bullshit again. You know, you can go in and be like, guys, you want to see me look like a superhero? Because it's going to be super cool for the photo ops. You know, they fucking just restart that process all over again. And then it's excuse. And then some. In in the case of the Minneapolis Police Department, this is excused behavior. So the 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 um, concern I have is because it's a legal move, they won't see this as murder, and that's why they're. I I think that's probably why they're doing um, a, a reduced murder charge, uh, because then the Minneapolis Police Department is going to have to fucking redo its entire training, which is like yeah, fucking good. You should redo all your training. That should not be a that should not be in your SOP. That should not be a part of your standard operating procedure. That's banana sandwiches that you fucking think that this is the right thing to do. So there are experts that are looking at this case. The experts say that um, asphyxia is what caused Floyd's death. Uh, and the city continues to say, no, 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 it was the pre-existing conditions. That's probably what it was. We're going to check into it. It really seems like those pre-existing conditions. You know the pre-existing condition where the cop chokes you out? You guys know that one? Like, this is, I feel like this is almost as bad as, like, like we're veering into that bullshit race sciences world, you know, where where people are, people are like, well, I mean, this is not really that big of a deal. We all know the blacks, they have the thicker necks. They have stronger neck muscles. They're built for this sort of stuff. Like you, that bullshit race science that they used to use. Like this is kind of where we're going with that, right? Like, oh, the pre-existing conditions of the heart. It wasn't somebody stand, putting their full weight of, a, of a, a giant human body on a tiny part of someone's trachea. Like that's not, no, no, no. It was the other things. That's just science. I love it. They all, they all, they all of a sudden, all of a sudden, these assholes start believing in science, right? Hey, put your mask on. That's my rights. Oh, all of a sudden, black man dies. Oh, no, no, no. It's a science. Pre-existing conditions are science. Everybody. So the other thing that they that they do in these situations too is, uh, you know, they look up a fucking tweet that that he might have had in two thousand two that was. Uh, might not have been politically correct or or he took a photo of himself of you know holding up a Tupac album holy shit um you know he 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 supported fucking who was that abusive rapper one of one of those whoever Rihanna was dating I can't remember that asshole's name you know he was like oh he made a tweet saying he was a fan of that guy huh this is that guy deserves to die they always kind of do that shit but George Floyd was described as a gentle giant. Gentle giant. That's what he was described as. And uh, he didn't resist the arrest. He complied with the officers. And then when Derek Chauvin was on his neck, he let them know he can't breathe. And they're saying, oh, I can hear you fine. When experts are saying, yeah, when you're being asphyxiated, 
you can still talk. Like your vocal cords are still active. You just don't have any air going into your lungs. That's a different fucking thing. Which is like, yeah, you want to sit there and say, oh, it's a science for pre-existing conditions, but you won't actually accept medical science that says you can speak while you're being asphyxiated because your vocal cords can still vibrate and make sound. You're a fucking lunatic. <laughs> Mayor Fry basically came out and said uh, uh, he wrestled. He wrestled with this, uh, with what happened to with, to George Floyd for thirty six hours before making his uh, his press release. Dude, I watched that video and in thirty six seconds. I was like, that dude should be fired and arrested for fucking murder. There's a, uh, I think this was a, a Minneapolis rapper by the name of Sims, uh, who's fantastic. Highly recommend Sims. And Doomtree and, and the entire collective, but uh, he came out and made he kind of pointed this out. And I was like, "That's fucking gold. That's so funny. Like that's one of those things. Like I wish I would have thought of that first. But um, he basically was like, uh, you know, they're they're saying that they need more evidence to file charges against Derek Chauvin. And um, I think what we all need to do as a as a people is come together uh, and get Mayor Fry and the Hennepin County District Attorney's Office, the internet. I mean, fucking this video is everywhere. It's fucking everywhere. Like, there's no way you couldn't have seen that video, and that's all the proof you need. There's a bunch of bystanders that are like, how long do you need to fucking do that? It's a nine-minute video, and the last four or three or four minutes of it, he's not moving. George Floyd is not moving. Oh, I wrestled with for 36 hours. Dude, the second that dude's on his neck, you're like, that dude is fucking insane. And Derek Chauvin needs to be in prison. For sure. What do you mean 36 hours? Holy shit. Little, little point of um, an interesting point uh, that I found. And a friend of mine was telling me this too, is that he had met George Floyd and, and had seen Officer Chauvin uh, but Officer Chauvin and George Floyd worked security at the same nightclub. Um, uh, uh, Floyd was was uh, part of the security staff. And Chauvin was their off-duty cop that would show up. Kind of a weird, suspicious thing. Um, that, you know, they, there, there probably could be an investigation done to see, like, what happened. Um you know, like what happened there? Was there an altercation in the video? It didn't seem like either one of them recognized each other. Uh, and that's very possible because from the statements that I've read, there was a lot of people that worked at that nightclub and that's fair. Um, you know, like I worked at, I worked at two different Starbucks and I never met all the employees there. Right. So it's just, that's just the sort of thing that happens, especially when you have like a larger staff. Like even when you have like a staff of like more than 10 people, you're not going to fucking meet everybody. You know, here's the other thing with Derek Chauvin too. Um, he had 10 counts uh, of conduct complaints that all involved violence. All of them involved violence. And uh, Amy Klobuchar, who's currently being vetted to be the vice presidential candidate for Joe Biden. Uh, and who, uh, when she was DA, put an innocent black teenager in prison for fucking life for a crime he did not commit where she basically paid people $500 to just say whatever they wanted to say and, and say that's evidence without really corroborating any of the facts that she misled an investigation and she ruined a fucking young kid's life forever. This lady declined to bring up charges against Derek Chauvin's, uh, you know, violent conduct complaints that he had. That's how high up the system this problem goes. That's how high up the chain this thing goes. That's why we're all fucking pissed. This lady's being vetted to be the vice president of the United States to a dementia patient running for president right now. And if she gets that nomination and somehow Joe Biden manages to get through and win, 
and then what happens? He becomes mentally unfit to 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 run the country, and she takes over. You're gonna tell me that that is going to prevent police violence across this country towards any minority community? Are you shitting? No fucking way. This lady is known to let these violent criminals go because they wear a blue fucking suit and a badge. And she wants their votes. She wants their votes. They make these half-hearted fucking tweets. Who gives a shit? Where's the legislation that says you're going to change the way policing is done in this country and you're going to stop militarizing the goddamn cops? Where's that piece of legislation? Oh, that's right. It doesn't get written. You send your fucking tweets and your press releases out and then you don't do dick all about it. And then Amy Klobuchar will decline to press charges against violent cops. will put innocent black kids in prison. Won't say a goddamn thing about people shooting black men in their vehicles for being legal gun owners. That's who is going to be the vice president. And oh, and then we're supposed to look at the Democrats and be like, oh yeah, they're the good guys. Yeah, the good guys are ensuring that innocent people are staying in prison and violent police officers continue to be violent. That's who the Democrats are. The Republicans are just racist assholes. They're going to, you know, look at the look at somebody like George Floyd and be like, well, he shouldn't have been doing something illegal. Anything illegal deserves death. If you if you jaywalk, we're going to chop your feet off and set you on fire in, fr in front of everybody. That's what the Republicans do. They're not shy about that shit. They're proud of that shit. The Democrats are a little bit more sneaky about it. Neither party has your interest in mind or the interest of the minority community in mind. Arguably, the Democrats might be worse because they make these half-hearted fucking claims and then do nothing about it. That's the leadership in this country right now. That's why we're all fucking pissed. Okay, let's, let's look at the comment that we have. Uh, they're telling us what we saw, never mind what we really saw. Yeah, it's gaslighting. Uli, it's gaslighting. It's exactly what they're doing. We saw this man get asphyxiated, and uh, they're like, no, 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 he had a heart condition. What? Yeah, yeah, the heart condition is what did him in. What? There was a man on his neck. <laughs> Dude, I've accidentally choked myself out wearing a shirt that's too tight. Like, I can't, and, and that's just, like, I know the discomfort of that. I can't even imagine, like, multiply that by, like, a, a thousand and that's what was happening to George Floyd. And they're just like, no, no, no. The, it's just uh, the reason you felt that is because uh, you have like a weak, dumb heart because you're a, a pussy liberal. That's probably why you, why that shirt. Yeah, it wasn't, it's not because it's two sizes too small. And you're, but it's because of your weak, dumb, pussy liberal heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, prob that's probably what George Floyd had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a condition called weak, pussy liberal heart. And that is, uh, that's probably what did him in, unfortunately. You know, that sucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're going to reduce the charges on this murderous cop and kind of just let him go like we've done 10 times before. That's what they do. All right, we're going to move to the next one. I, I have a suspicion that this next topic is what's going to end up get, uh, with uh, with a bunch more comments uh, throughout the thing. And again, I will read your comments at the end of each segment so I don't lose my train of thought. Um, God, I, there is a, uh, um, I, I hope you guys can't hear that car alarm going off in the background because it's super fucking loud. You're right. I can't even wear a turtleneck sweater. I know. Right. Yeah. It's just, it, yeah, I don't like my, like, this is, this is as much as I'm, I'm willing to go. And there was a dude, like, imagine if this was like a person, like that would be crazy. Um, so uh, but okay, so our next topic is uh, we're going to talk about these protests and these riots and what they're actually about because there's a lot of people discussing this shit and they're making the narrative all about this shit. Um, and I think a lot of it is missing the goddamn point. Um, so here's the thing with these protests and riots, right? Um, okay, um, I just saw that you guys could use that fucking crazy ass car alarm. Um, so here's the thing with these uh, protests and riots, right, is uh, 
in a lot of these instances, the violence that is that is instigated, incited, and started um, in a lot of cases comes from provocateurs and undercover cops uh, that that have infiltrated these protests specifically to do that. I watched a bunch of videos from protesters on the ground, right? Uh, it's like citizen reporting because fucking CNN ain't going to talk about this shit. A lot of this, a lot of these people are like provocateurs. I watched a bunch of these videos and I might have witnessed some of it yesterday as well when I was at the protest. I made a video about it earlier, uh, but I'll, I'll kind of give you guys a little bit of a brief of what I suspect happened. I'm not making any bold yes or no definitive claims. I'm saying this is what I suspect and this is th this should be investigated. Um, so uh, there are undercover cops, provocateurs, all that sort of stuff that uh, uh, show up and there's videos of them where they, uh, they're the ones kind of using their crowbar and popping things off. Uh, and, uh, and then they're throwing bricks into buildings and, you know, they're, they're like, huh, how about these bricks? You guys want some of these? Right. And they're, and they're basically using the anger and the fervor that we have as protesters, as activists, and they're trying to manipulate it and turn it into violent rage. And the sad part is it works. Some, and in a lot of instances, it works, right? You end up with that herd mentality. I kind of saw that yesterday. There were, there were two gentlemen on uh, motorcycles that tried to run through the crowd and stir everybody up um, and create a stampede. Um, the, the person that started the, the cop car fire in Pittsburgh was just this anarchist kid uh, that was like flipping off the rest of the protesters and he was spray painting an A and you know, setting shit on fire. And like, he wasn't really part, like, it didn't seem like he was part of this protest. He just kind of swooped himself in. The two black dudes that were on the bike were also like following the protesters, which seemed very, very odd. And they were egging them on. So basically like they wanted the protesters to turn violent. Um, uh, God damn it. This car alarm, you guys is, is, is so fucking obnoxious. Uh, I'm sorry that this is going off. Um, but uh, I'll try to keep talking so it browns it out. But, you know, they, they these these bikers were like following us around. Um, they didn't need to do that. And neither did the cops look at these bikers who were constantly following the the uh, uh, fucking uh, protest around. The cops didn't do shit because the cops want that to be there. They want they want these provocateurs to be there. So at the least, my my suspicion is that these two people on the motorbikes were uh, at the least provocateurs that were either encouraged or hired by the police. Um, at the worst, they were undercover cops that were sent in to stir the crowd up. And then on top of that, there were a bunch of empty uh, police cars, police cruisers that were um, uh, that were just left on the side of the street on the path of the protest, which is bizarre because it's like, what police car, police cruiser have you ever seen that is just kind of left on the side of the street without any cops around it or cops inside of it? Kind of seems a little weird, right? But I've also seen videos where it's like, there's no construction going on, but there's a pile of cinder blocks and bricks right on the side of a street corner next to a bank. What's that all about? It's these weird little things that happen. And if and it, all of this is like, oh, Krish, conspiracy theories. You can't, the law enforcement wouldn't do that. Sure, they would kill innocent black people, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna infiltrate protests. Come on, these are the kind of semi, okay, maybe kind of murderers, but they're good murderers. They're good people that are that happen to be murderers. That's, come on, this is all really, this is just the poor man's COINTELPRO. And if you're unfamiliar with what COINTELPRO is, it's what the FBI did to the Black Panthers when the Black Panthers started doing community initiatives like free breakfast and started teaching communities how to do that. Free breakfast, free healthcare, free ambulance ride, free health checkups. They were doing that in the 60s. And J. Edgar Hoover freaked the fuck out because, oh my God, communities were feeding the starving people in their own communities. 
and they were helping each other out. And he infiltrated them and he started disorganizing them and he incited violence. Fred Hampton was fucking murdered by the Chicago Police Department. Why? Because he was bridging the gap between the white, poor black community and the poor white community, the poor Asian community, the poor brown community. He was bringing them all together. And the Chicago Police Department fucking murdered that guy. And there is a um, there is evidence that says that Fred Hampton's murder wouldn't have happened had there not been somebody on the inside that was working with the police. So really, you're going to tell me that cops don't infiltrate it when we have a history of that shit? Oh, that's right. The history of that shit isn't taught to anybody, is it? Nobody talks about that end of the Black Panthers. We talks about the fact that COINTELPRO and 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 this this uh, infiltration of the Black Panthers by various different police departments and the FBI actually happened just by manipulating people's economic status for one, and for two happened specifically because they were succeeding at nonviolent protesting. They want to turn the nonviolent protests into violent protests to discount them. But no, let's make the narrative about, about violent protesters. It's, it's also a not understanding that on day one of the protests, my understanding is that the cops in Minneapolis, um, it, they were the ones that instigated um, uh, they were the ones that instigated and escalated the violence by throwing tear gas at peaceful protesters, tear gas, rubber bullets. And then we have evidence of that too. It's like India, Indianapolis that happened in apparently. Um, they were just firing rubber bullets and tear gas at protesters that didn't do anything. They were like, oh, they broke a window. Yeah, okay, okay. So we're basically protesting uh, the over-exaggerated measures that cops take to make it fucking more violent. Right to make it, they're they're like, hey, we're we're peacefully protesting. We got all these chants. We got all these signs. We want you to know that we're sick of violent cops. And what do the cops do? They get more fucking violent. They're spray painting. Get out the rubber bullets. Don't we criticize countries that have these um, outrageously outdated? legal systems that seem to be prone on violence. Don't we kind of make fun of those societies? So a, that's, it's a lot of bullshit in my opinion, where we come out and be like, Oh, we're Ron. They're, they're meanie pants with their, they, they're beheading people. They're all, they're killing. I mean, you, you steal a candy bar and they just set you on fire in the middle of the road. What did we just do? Counterfeit bill and it's fucking let's put their knee on somebody's neck and kill them. Spray painting. Let's tear gas that crowd. What's the difference? There isn't any. There fucking isn't any. Now there's a lot of folks. There's a lot of folks particularly from the moderate liberal camp uh, that are upset. Oh, they're mad. They're mad about these rioters, you guys. They're pissed. You know, they're like, oh, these bad apples. They're coming out here and they're, and, and they're, and they're setting the targets on fire and they're looting and they're burning down the auto zones. And, and boy, CNN, CNN got hurt. We, I, and they spray painted the, the CNNs and, and that's, and that's just unacceptable because I get a lot of lavender scented things from the targets. And, uh, I, I, I even, uh, uh, I'm, I'm a protester too, as a moderate liberal, I'm a protester too, because I went into the auto zone and I, uh, I protested to get a lavender scented engine in there. And I did, and I, and they, and they did it and they did it for me. They did it because I'm a protester. I'm a, a moderate liberal. Pro that's what I did, and and these mean pants are uh, they're burning that stuff. Yeah, you didn't say fucking dick all when Target was treating their fucking employees like trash. Where if they have to make their own masks, they barely get hazard pay. Their customers are getting aggressive. 
is fucking moderate liberals say not a goddamn thing when they when when these employees go on strike just whoop, zip silence nothing Not a fucking thing, right? All of a sudden, some poor people finally get the things that they actually need to get, like diapers and milk and food during a during a fucking protest because the cops are lobbying fucking tear gas at them and shit, and they're like, fuck it. The cops are escalating. We'll push back and escalate. That's also part of the history of the Black Panthers. The cops would escalate, and then the Panthers would escalate. And then the cops would re-escalate. And the Panthers would have to push back. The Panthers didn't start violently. The violence started because the cops were killing black people. Same fucking issue. They stayed silent, and they quoted fucking CNBC money reports. And they're like, here's the, look, the economy and the stocks, and you gotta look at the Wall Street and look at the bottom line. Okay, look, if you look at these reports, very smart, very smart. I got all these accounts, so I got to, the bottom line, make all these fucking claims. They didn't say a goddamn thing about trillions of dollars being sent out to the corporations. When the corporations and Congress looted the American people, said not a goddamn thing. Somebody gets a bunch of fucking diapers that they need to help their kid during a pandemic when Congress isn't fucking helping out people and they go, oh, this is ridiculous. This is not what protesting is about. You don't get it. You don't understand what this is about. You stayed silent. You stayed silent when people went on strike for better and basic human rights. You stayed fucking silent during that shit. And all of a sudden you want to would you want to voice up about, oh, the treatment of corporations? How are these protesters treating these corporations? Oh, my word. Where will I get my lavender scented things now? It's time to end these hypocrisies. It's time to end these fucking platitudes. Not a, and you know what else they don't do? There's not a fucking word on how these cops actually treat these protesters. Because the cops are killed. Like, there is footage of um, a protester named Luke that was hit and run over by a police cruiser in L.A. during a peaceful protest. They weren't getting violent. And what was the media spin on that? What did everybody get caught up? Oh, they threw a skateboard at the back windshield. of. Oh, dear lordy, why would they? That is just so mean. So mean of them to how dare they? I mean, these cops, they're sure they're murderers and killers, but they're good, they're good people that happen to be murderers and killers. They don't fucking say anything about these cops murdering protesters during a peaceful protest. There were two people, there was a fucking Mustang yesterday that drove through the Pittsburgh protests, injured two people. Where the fuck are these people talking about that? Why aren't the cops going after them? Why aren't these people coming out and saying something about that? Why aren't the cops coming out? Why, why aren't anybody coming out and saying, hey, you know those fucking guys on motorcycles in, in Pittsburgh yesterday that were just antagonizing and following the protest? Why, why weren't the cops doing anything about that? Why aren't you showing that same level of outrage for that? You want to see what the cops actually do? Let's take a look at some stuff that the cops actually do. Because I have a couple of things that, that I found uh, over, on, over on the Twitters. And um, be patient because I have to switch... A couple of screens and stuff around but i hope you guys can hear this stuff this is uh this is from uh, a black lives matter protest yesterday uh, may 30th right there um and and this is what the cops the nypd is doing to these people <laughs> watch this Here comes the second cruiser. And then they're trying to mow through these people. Look at that shit. That's crazy. That's what the police do to protesters. Here's something else that they're doing uh, to, to these guys as well. So give me a second. I got to switch over to the screens. 
this is the type of stuff that they're doing that um, nobody wants to really address. That uh, people people just kind of ignore, and and they make it all, all about oh look at these protesters are getting pretty violent. Uh, here's the, here's what happened in Louisville. They, this happened. These are cops right here, destroying everything. You're gonna take the materials and all sort of peacefully protest. This is what they did. Look at that. The cops are coming in and they're blockading these people. Even if they're not cops, even if they're not cops, those cops came in and they fucking blockaded people. Look at that. They're blockading these people from getting to their water. Here's what cops think of, of, of journalists, by the way. Uh, this is from Unicorn Riot. They shared this. Uh, the, they shared this recently. And uh, let me see. I'm going to make sure I find the right one here. This is from Unicorn Riot's tweet. Uh, let's listen. Uh, okay. Cool. Okay. Did you just hear that? Can you say more? So if you didn't hear him, they said, if you come any closer, uh, you would get baked. And then they said, you are part of the problem, if not the entire problem. This is, this is fucking journalists that they're doing this to. Where's the outrage to all of this from these moderates, liberals, that I'm, that I'm not seeing it? All I'm seeing is a bunch of outrage for, oh boy, some of these bad apples. While we're on the bad apple argument, how come, you know, the, the bad apple argument is something that's it's okay to use for protesters as a valid excuse to demonize protesters. But when you say, oh, bad apples for cops, like, no, 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 you can't. That's, not, that's a false argument to make. The, it's just these bullshit double standards that people like to go through. And it's and I, quite frankly, I'm I'm very very tired of hearing it. These bad apples. Oh, look at these bad apples. They're so awful. Yeah, but don't say that by the cops. The whole the whole narrative is not going to shift, right? The whole narrative starts shifting. It doesn't become about what these guys are protesting and, and rioting about. Why is there such justified rage? And it is justified rage. Uh, and I'm going to talk about why it's justified rage. The narrative ends up becoming about, oh, violent, uh, protesters shouldn't be violent. Sure, they're going to get tear gassed and rubber bulleted, but they should, they sh they're, they look. These cops are doing a very difficult job, so it's okay for these cops to get scared of regular unarmed people that are completely defenseless and weigh one third of them. They that's that's scary, okay? Because it's because it's it's terrifying. And but protesters shouldn't get scared and act out in a, when they see tear gas and rubber bullets. That's ridiculous with that. You get out of here. You got to be patient and you just take those tear gases and rubber bullets to the chest. You got to just take it hard in the chest. You got to do it. That's that's what protesting is about, baby. Uh, I don't think you get it. The narrative ends up becoming about that, right? The media spins the narrative. They don't talk about the, the cops getting aggressive towards them. I mean, the videos I saw yesterday from my friend's live feed was... But it, like the cops were lobbing, they're setting dogs out, lobbing tear gas, rubber bullets. None of these protesters are armed, by the way. None of them are armed. They're still waving their signs and they're still singing their chants. But the narrative is, is oh, violent protesters. Nope, we can't listen to what you say now. Violent protesters. Well, you didn't listen to us before. Listen to us when we were marching peacefully. We weren't listening to us when we were talking about it. We've been talking about this shit for a few years. I know a bunch of journalists have been covering this sort of stuff. How long has this been going on? You weren't listening to us before. This is not about violent protest versus nonviolent protest. 
This is about a racist, thuggish, violent, unjust, unequal criminal justice system that disproportionately on a statistical level kills minorities versus uh, white people. They still kill a lot of white people. Cops still kill a lot of white people every year. Statistically speaking, there's less black people and brown people in this country. So out of that population, st the statistical numbers are larger for the minority community. It's about the largest wealth transfer in history to the already rich and wealthy in this country, leaving us in the, in the working middle class to get pittance, to get scrape, scraps, right? This is about communities of color and the middle class who haven't received testing over a fucking pandemic when we've been asking for Medicare for all. People are getting sick and they don't have a way to treat this thing. They don't have a way to get tested to find out whether they actually have the, the disease or not. Been talking about Medicare for all for so long. People are tired. They're getting sick and they're getting scared. This is about a system that abuses and uses people at like pawns, regular average people. They get used like pawns to sacrifice to some fucking economy for the sake of some bullshit economy. And by making an argument that these targets and the banks and the fucking auto zones are more important than all of these arguments here that we have been peacefully talking about for years and years and years. And then to say that our anger is not justified when we kept saying there's a peaceful way to accomplish these goals. There's a peaceful, these will work. We have to try them. These will work. And you didn't fucking listen to it. What do you think is going to happen when people get tired, scared, and angry? You're looking at it. This is justified rage. That's what this is about. And look at how many of us believe in this thing, too. There were thousands of people in Pittsburgh yesterday. There were hundreds and thousands of people all across the country that marched, protested, Things got out of hand. I'll admit that. Look, I'm a pacifist. I, I'm, I, I can't do the rioting thing. It's not particularly in me. I was talking to a friend of mine about this yesterday. We all have to kind of find our purpose and find our role in all this stuff, right? I'm the guy that's going to come in with the information. That's what I got. I'm, I'm armed with information. Educate some folks about what's going on try to make sure I'm, I'm getting the accurate picture one way or the other. Um, I'm the guy that's going to bring some extra water bottles and some extra masks to the protest. Uh, I did not have a book bag yesterday. I should have had a book bag. Um, I'm that guy. I'm not the guy that's going to throw water bottles at a cop. I'm not the guy that's going to charge into the front lines I'm not a warrior. That's not me. There's plenty of other people out there that are those warriors. There's plenty of other people that are going to be medics that know what to do when, when you get hit by tear gas that are going to help you out with that. I want people to be safe and I'm going to do what I can, but I'm not going to get in their way. You know what I mean? I'm not going to set some shit on fire, but I will let you know that the wind's blowing east. I'm a pacifist, but that, that, that doesn't mean that I'm going to get in the way of justified anger. If you, if you think that targets are more important than human lives, you're on the wrong side of this revolution. You're on the wrong side of this revolution. Here's a question, I think, it, especially the people that, that are in, like, these moderates that are, um, you know, Oh, the riots, come on. We got to keep it peaceful. Even when you're getting the rah, 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 rah. Here's a question you should ask yourself. Um, how many of these protesters, violent or otherwise, uh, have uh, killed cops or National Guardsmen? How many of them have injured cops and National Guardsmen to, to a point where they've had to go to a hospital and maybe... Uh, 
um, I don't know, replaced a limb or uh, had to, you know, be in extensive care. Cops had to go in medical debt because of that. How many of, how many protesters have have done that to cops? I I got none. I have zero. The answer is fucking nil. Zero. How many cops have killed innocent people in our society? I got. I've lost count. That's how many it is. We just saw how the pro cops were treating protesters and journalists. And they still have the audacity to sit there and say, well, peaceful, pro come on. They have guns. We don't. We're just doing what we can to defend ourselves. That's what the protesters and activists are doing now. That's what everybody in the middle class is doing now. We're just trying to defend ourselves. Because it's become very clear that the cops and these points of authority are not here to protect us. They are about to call the military police to Minnesota right now. They've already called the National Guard in a lot of these places. Pittsburgh is under curfew for the weekend. Chicago, Minneapolis, Seattle, that fucking uh, Atlanta. There's a bunch of places that are now on curfew. Which is like, that's not the response. Again, the point of these protests is the outrageous, violent measures that police take for low-level crimes, misdemeanors at best, and the violence towards the middle class and people of color, who are also part of the middle class. And in order to show that you understand what we're protesting about, you come out with more violence towards it? How does that make any sense? How does, how does what's happening now to the protesters not justify the fact that we already live in an authoritarian state? And mind you, uh, I think this was 2014. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when Ferguson was going on, it was the same thing. Riot gear, tear gas, National Guard, all towards protesters that wanted... Uh, justice that wanted to end the fucking killing of black people by police officers. The protest got a little too big. Numbers got a little too big. The, the fucking uh, Atlanta police department, I saw a tweet the other day where they were basically like, yeah, we don't want to go out because the protesters outnumber us four to one and we're scared. It's like, yeah, fucking good. Guess what that means? You should probably start listening. You should probably start listening. Now, if you are a moderate liberal and you're like, well, how do we help? How can we help? Here's a cool way that you can help. Here's a way that you can show solidarity. Here's an example of that. Maybe this can spark some inspiration in some people. The Minneapolis uh, bus drivers, the city bus drivers, have refused to transport any arrested protesters. That's fucking awesome. The Minneapolis bus drivers basically said that they're not going to do it. Um, and uh, and here's the quote. Make sure I get this. That's right. Uh, here's the quote, right, from Adam Birch, uh, who is a bus driver for the Metro Transit in Minneapolis and a member of the ATU Local 1005. Here's what he wrote on uh, online said, as a transit worker and a union member, I refuse to transport my class and radical youth to jail. An injury to one is an injury to all. The police murdered George Floyd and the protest against it is completely justified and should continue until their demands are met. I will encourage and try to convince all of my coworkers and fellow union members to also refuse to assist MPD sending protesters to jail that is fantastic that is how you show solidarity to protesters right now if these folks out there that are that are still uh, violent protests bad uh, 
if these folks out there are still making these statements and you wanted peaceful protesting and you want peaceful protesting to work, why are you staying silent when there are striking workers? Why are you staying silent for that? When Amazon workers went on strike, why would you just be quiet about it? Why are you not championing a people's party against two corporate parties that virtually believe in the same things? And then when, when people advocate for that, you're shitting on them. Why are you doing that? That's a people way to do it. A new political party that specifically revolves around the interests of the people that would, that would support things like Minneapolis bus drivers not taking arrested protesters in, into custody? Why are you not supporting that? Where is the class solidarity from these people? There isn't. You'd like to make a nice Facebook post, but you won't go out there and support it. You won't address and support people talking about this stuff. Instead, you will lob insults and names and pretend you're better than them. And that's not helping anything. This anger is justified. There's a lot of people doing a lot of things. They're expressing their anger in, it, in, in various different ways. And you're saying, no, there's only one way to express anger. And it's the way that the, the moderate liberal says to express anger. That's not, that's not showing that you understand anything. This anger is justified. What's happening in these protests? Justified. I, I want to play a clip and talk about this clip because uh, here's the thing. Like, these moderates love to fucking quote Martin Luther King. They love it. They're, that's like their favorite thing to quote is, is, oh boy, Martin Luther King, civil non-disobedience, right? We should do that. And uh, I'm all for it. You know, I'm a, like I said, I'm a pacifist, but I'm going to get out of the fucking way when I need to get out of the fucking way. And they, and they like to quote Martin Luther King Jr. So I want to play um, this interview from <clears throat> 1966, which was republished uh, about a year or two ago. So let's, let's listen to this thing, and I'll, I'll kind of stop and talk in the middle. It's not very long. So this is the interview on 60 Minutes. I will did. never change uh, in my basic idea that nonviolence is the most potent weapon available to the Negro in his struggle for freedom and justice. I think for the Negro to turn to violence would be both impractical and immoral. And I do believe, again, I do believe, I do believe in that, right? But that it becomes impractical, but it only becomes impractical because you have a you have a contingent of people that look at the violence and miss the point. They miss the they miss what the anger is really about. They miss the whole fucking point of it. Uh, so there's a second step to it, you know. the The only time that it becomes impractical is when people give in to uh, the propaganda levied by the media. There is an increasingly vocal minority who disagreed totally with your tactics, Dr. King. Oh, this is There's where the no doubt about in. that. I will agree that uh, there is a, a group in the Negro community advocating violence now. I happen to feel that this group represents a numerical minority. Surveys have revealed this. But the vast majority of Negroes still feel that the best way to deal with the dilemma that we face in this country is uh, through nonviolent resistance. And uh, I don't think this vocal group will be able uh, to make a real dent in the Negro community in terms of swaying 22 million Negroes to this particular point of view. And I contend that the cry of black power is at bottom a reaction to the reluctance of white power to make the kind of changes necessary to make justice a reality for the Negro. I think we've got to see that a riot is the language of the unheard. And what is it that America has failed to hear? It is That's the second part that they really don't talk about. What is it that America has failed to hear? 
and we talked about that. The police violence against minority communities. The enriching of already rich people. The looting of the American people. The silence from the moderate liberal. Who, by the way, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., for as much as I've seen moderate liberals quote this, this thing, this quote, oh, he was still an advocate for civil disobedience. Well, that's an important distinction to make here. It's a language of the unheard. And the question is, what is America failing to hear? They don't like to say that second part of the quote. Because that second part of the quote justifies that anger. And Martin Luther King Jr. basically said that the, the uh, well, he said the white liberal moderate is the most dangerous person because they are more about order than they are about justice. And when it becomes more about order than justice, then you are willing to do what the authoritarians tell you to do. A riot is the language of the unheard. And what is America failing to hear? What have we failed to hear? We failed to hear all the strikers across this country for months on end talking about what we need. We failed to hear the calls of, of universal basic income and Medicare for all. We've hate, failed to hear the calls of the minority community saying, stop killing us with your police force. We need to transform this, this policing system. They missed the point. They missed the point. To say that the only way to drive change is nonviolence ignores the history of the Black Panthers, Malcolm X, a bunch of civil rights leaders who were, were counterbalanced to this. I believe in that. It, it's got to be balanced. My voice only goes so far. Your voices only go so far. Collectively, our voices are much louder and they get even louder. Unfortunately, when some shit starts setting on fire. And then when that happens, people like me and all of the nonviolent people go, hello, we're still here. We would still like to talk to you if you were willing to talk because the alternative is you see a lot of anger go in this other direction. We also have anger. We are choosing to express it in a different way. If you would like to express, if you would like to accept that different way of expression, come on over. Let's have a discussion about how we can meet our demands. If you can't, well, we're stepping out of the way again. There's a whole lot of people that are willing to set a whole lot more precincts on fire. Again, I'm not going to light the building on fire, but I will tell you which way the wind is blowing. The Black Panthers fought for creating solidarity between all races, genders, and creeds, and they were attacked for it. Their peaceful resistance turned violent because it was escalated by the cops, by the FBI infiltrating them. That history is erased. A ride is the language of the unheard. What is America failing to hear? Let's look at a few of your comments. Uh, so, say, hey, Sarah, good to good to see you. Sarah was talking about the um, um, the, pro, the the cops escalating things and the provocateurs. Uh, they're passing laws to make it illegal to run down protesters with your cop car, cops included. Yeah, I hope those police officers go to prison for it. Like, I hope they get arrested for it, and I hope this guy that ran over some people in Pittsburgh um, get arrested for it. Um, Black Panthers are here. My friend got an interview. Oh, cool. You should post the link to the interview. Uh, if, if it's, if it's a, up somewhere, you should post the link to it. Cause that'd be, that'd be awesome. Um, the Black Panther, I'm, I'm basically going to do a history of Black Panthers for the June 5th virtual stand-up comedy show that I'm donating a hundred percent of the ticket sales to the Minneapolis, uh, freedom fund. Uh, and this is in regards to the Fred Hampton. Yeah. 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 There was a security guard that gave him the floor plan to Fred Hampton's apartment. They, they got to the security guard and he was working for the Chicago police department. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, uh, 
Thank you so much. Uh, oh, Sarah, you started a watch party. That's very cool. Thank you for doing that. That's that's really, really cool. Um, yeah, thank you, guys. So we got one more section to go. We're going to talk about how the police problem is actually systematic. There's a couple different things to take into account here. Um, first of all, I, I know some of you probably have heard this information, uh, so bear with me. Uh, the IQ test and the empathy test, if you score too high on either one of those things, they won't let you into the force. So if you're too empathetic and too smart, they're like, nah, we don't want you. You got to be just, you got to be just above average so you can follow orders and basically listen to the propaganda. And if we say that, uh, oh, the black people are going to be, uh, they're scary, they're scary, those black folks. Um, then you need to make sure that the IQ of that person is in line with that. Uh, there's an argument about good cops. I used to do a bit where I used to talk about the good cops. And this is four or five years ago that I did this bit. And it was very controversial. Uh, I, I was talking to my friend Jay yesterday, Jay Jackson yesterday. And I was basically like, well, I, I, really the bit is about media manipulation. Uh, and when I, when I started writing it, I was like, well, how do I get everybody to hate me, uh, instead of just half the room? And I was like, oh, I know I'll make it about police brutality too. <laughs> um, and we don't see these narratives about good cops and there's a reason one, they don't want to show you that, right? They don't want to show you the cops that are, that actually are, that live within the neighborhood that know what's going on in the neighborhood, right? That, you know, if, if Derek Chauvin and all those other cops lived in that neighborhood, but maybe they would know who George Floyd was and maybe they would know that he's not going to be a, a violent person despite his size, which they fucking, they profiled him on various different accounts. Um, they would know he's the gentle giant and they would have probably pulled him out of the car and said, Hey, can you just go to the side of the road? We're going to ask you some questions, counterfeit $20 bill, blah, blah, blah. It would have been a peaceful exchange. Those cops don't exist. Those cops get beaten out of the system. Um, I've heard several stories of, uh, of, of good police officers that have had their, their families and their lives threatened by the rest of the force because they're going to call them out on some, some of their shit, on some of their racist, violent shit. They don't last in the system. The system is not built to keep them in there. The system is built to turn you, either turn you into a Derek Chauvin, a Daniel Pantaleo, these countless other killer cops that are out there. Or they're removed. They have to leave the force because, they, they, because they're not protecting and serving their communities. They are protecting and serving the interests of the rich, the interests of corporations. They also have... Um, there's a bunch of psychological reports that are out there that basically was like, oh yeah, cops have PTSD from just being cops. The job of being cops is, 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 is actually giving human beings PTSD, including people that decide to be cops. Uh, there's an us versus them mentality uh, that's bred into the police force. And uh, it comes from the fact that like all of us are like they're the they're the thin blue line between order and chaos and we are the chaos so they have to keep the order so they see themselves above all of that above these laws so they can break the laws in order to make sure that there's order and they only see you know the dregs of society they only see people breaking the law committing crimes and things of that sort. So they equate all of the crimes to chaos. Hence why a counterfeit charge led to them using highly excessive force. That's why somebody getting pulled over for a routine traffic stop ends up getting dragged out, ends up getting shot. A basic burglary charge ends up with, it, with the, uh, a kid with three bullets in his back. So, but it's that us versus them mentality. It's given them PTSD. Nobody's inviting cops over to be like, look, if you fucking bake these awesome ass cookies, 
Oh my God, they're good. Are you vegan? We got vegan cookies. No one's doing that shit. No one's trying to fucking have cops over for their rager, right? Like, you know, it's not super bad. No one's inviting the cop over to their fucking birthday party. But, and that's partly because they're not, they're not community-driven cops. They don't live in the neighborhood. They don't fucking know you. They don't owe you shit. They're coming in from other neighborhoods, more affluent neighborhoods, and they look at these low-income neighborhoods as trash. Again, that us versus them. They're reactive. They're defensive. And the system rewards this sort of shit. There's an encouragement to lie, especially with the NYPD. The NYPD is, has been encouraged to lie. And, um, and that is to protect the cops and to protect their way of doing things. This is what I mean. This is perjury. They're like they're encouraged to commit perjury, and they have to, and they get to get away with it. That's systemic. If they're COs and they're commissioners and the DAs, and possibly a vice presidential candidate is encouraging all of this stuff as she has, that's how deep rooted the problem is within the system. Then you have the militarization of the police, where the military gives their like old unwanted shit to these police departments, right? It's like well, that's not necessary. If you're if you're stop making a, a traffic stop, what do you what do you need battle armor for? I understand that things can go wild in any moment. I get it. No one's claiming that your job's not dangerous, bro. But why you got your fucking hand on your gun when you're coming to give me a speeding ticket or a warning that I was too close to a fucking truck or some shit? I... Because they're trained to be like the military. Fucking Dothan, Alabama doesn't need a tank in its police force. No cop is encouraged to be a part of um, the middle class, the working class people. There's no solidarity to them, uh, to us, right? That, that comes from the Boston police strike of what happens uh, when, uh, when um, cops strike back against the system. So what happened to the Boston police strike of 1919, over 100 years ago now, 101 years ago? Around this time, too, I think it started in the summer and then it escalated in the fall. I'm going to do a recap. I did a bigger, longer video about it that's on this channel that you can go check out if you would like to. I posted a bunch of it. I posted it up a, a few times. Maybe some of you caught it. Maybe some of you didn't. I don't, I'm not particularly sure. But uh, basically what happened with the Boston police strike is the police officers were asking for better hours, uh, better pay, and better living conditions because, because they were working these long hours and they would get these very limited time off. And even that time off, if they wanted to leave the city of Boston, they had to get special permission, which most of the time they would get denied uh, because the police force would call them in on their day off anyway. So they're constantly working. They're not getting paid shit. Um, and... So they tried to, they basically unionized uh, the governor of Massachusetts, the mayor of Boston, and the president at the time uh, would not recognize the union and was like, your union's bullshit. H how about we just, uh, we'll get you some new uniforms. Is that cool? Is that good? Are you done? Shut the fuck up and get back on the job, right? That's kind of how they treated these cops. And uh, so the police were like, no, this is, this is ridiculous. Like this union's real. Like this union matters. It's a it's a legit fucking union, and so they decided that they're gonna strike. So like, I think like three quarters or something like that, just didn't show up for duty, and they said that they're striking. So the mayor freaks out, deputizes a bunch of Harvard kids. So a bunch of fucking over hormonal eighteen year old kids are now deputized and armed to protect Boston. Because the mayor thought 
there would be riots. And basically what happened is a bunch of people saw these kids with guns and were like, holy shit, what is happening? And then panicked. So the mayor instigated a bunch of fucking riots. And then he calls the National Guard in, right? Like he calls the governor. The governor is like, yep, we got to send a National Guard in. So the National Guard gets called in. That incites more shit. Now, at the end of it, th the unfortunate thing is that the, that the cops lost that's why you'll never see another cop police strike. And that's why you probably will never see any of these police officers taking the side of protesters and activists or the working class and fighting on our behalf. Probably. There might be a few exceptions to the rule, but there's a good chance that that's not going to happen. Because what happened was they lost. They didn't get what they wanted. They didn't get better living conditions. They didn't get uh, better pay. They didn't get better um, hours. They got fired for 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 not showing up to the job. And then there was a um, there was a major unemployment in 1919 because of World War II. So there were a bunch of out of work vets, and they were like, "Hey, vets, would you like to come become part of the police force?" And then they fucking hired a bunch of vets with PTSD from the war. And what did the vets get? They got the pay raise. They got the better hours. They got the better living quarters. So the lesson is, it's not that they didn't, couldn't give it to them. It's that they didn't want to give it to them. And they punished the cops for going against them. Because the cops are there to protect the establishment. They're there to protect the status quo. So if you're wondering why um, the the Asian American police officer, I can't remember his name, apologize for that, uh, was standing to make sure nobody disrupts Derek Chauvin's knee to be on George Floyd's neck, it's because of that. If he goes against the system, they have drilled it into them through history that they will lose they will get fired and lose everything. And the people they hire to replace them will get all of the demands that they're asking for. Basically, it puts the police in their place to say that the establishment owns the police. Now, this should piss off everybody in the police force. But... They are encouraged to have lower IQs and lower empathy, so I doubt that that will particularly happen. So it's systemic. It's a looping system of shittiness. Then you do have vets in PTS with PTSD. I remember um, when I was driving through Greensboro and and Charlotte uh, back in the fall. Remember when we were doing live events? You guys remember that? Um, <laughs> I was uh, I was driving. Uh, Greensboro to Greenville, and then I was going up to Charlotte and stuff on this tour. And uh, there was an ad that would play uh, when I was listening a lot more to Spotify before they fucked me over. But uh, was, there was an ad that was calling specifically for veterans that have military experience to join the Charlotte's Mecklenburg Police Department. And you can see these military tactics being used against the protesters, right? Because of the way they coordinate and the way they orchestrate certain things. Like the creepiest thing when the police car got set on fire yesterday at the Pittsburgh protest was the fact that when it happened, I didn't fucking hear um, one police siren. Not one. Until we got back to our cars and started driving back to my buddy's place. I didn't hear one fucking siren. And then I watched the videos about how they strategically circled and fucking trapped these protesters. And the protesters have to make barricades with garbage cans and cones and all this other shit. But the cops are in military gear with their tear gas canisters and their rubber bullet guns and their riot gear and their shields beating their shields like they're fucking Spartan warriors. Like they're reenacting 300 on the streets of Pittsburgh. And they want fucking veterans with military training so that they can look at us as insurgents. That's what they're making the police officers look at fucking protesters like. Like we're goddamn insurgents. This is the system that is in place. This is what these protests 
are trying to fight. And they're proving our point. So again, if you're one of these fucking moderate liberals that's like, bad violence. Dude. The example is right in front of you. Oh, like you just have to op be open your eyes. If it makes you uncomfortable, fucking good, man. Because we've been living in discomfort for a very long time and you've kind of not listened to it. So now we're kind of forcing it on you because that's the only way we feel like we can be heard. Like from the clip earlier, right? It's a language of the unheard. What is America not hearing? Not only that, but the training that these cops have to go through is also based on aggression and not on de-escalation. They don't get any mental health training. Uh, they only get training in, in aggressive shit. I mean, you can see it. If you watch the video of before um, George Floyd got arrested, the amount of aggression that they were using against him when he wasn't resisting is wild, and they're trained to do that. They're fucking trained to do that. So what's the solution to this stuff, right? Um, I talked about this about a year and a half ago. Uh, one of the solutions to something like this is community policing. You hire people from within the community itself. None of this outside hires. You don't fucking, um, uh, you don't fucking hire somebody from an at, like some affluent, richy, rich fucking neighborhood that has no, like they have no idea who lives here, what these businesses are about, who's going through a difficult time in the neighborhood. You need more of that community level policing, right? They have to live in the community to give a shit about the community. Um, and not in all instances, I get it. There's lots of communities that I don't live in that I care about, but I'm also not a fucking police officer that has a gun. So it's a little different. Um, I think we need peace officers. We need peace officers that are able to uh, moderate certain things, mediate, be the be the middle person, so that thing you know conflicts don't escalate. Uh, that doesn't happen when you show up in riot gear. That's never fucking known to happen. Are you shitting me? Even fucking when horse cops show up, things get crazy. And even then, it's like the horses are just like, I don't want to fucking be here. I'm on the side of the people. Horse lives matter too, motherfucker. And then they're fucking peacing out, right? Like, there's a bunch of horse cops that got ran out yesterday uh, in Pittsburgh, and it was awesome. It was hilarious to watch, right? Like, those horses were like, horse lives matter. Fuck it. We're leaving, right? And then, like, and now, t I bet on Monday, those horses are going to turn in their two-week their two week notice. The other way we can do this is by compartmentalizing all of these jobs. Do we need riot cops? Maybe in instances where there's actually a fucking riot. You know, where there's like an act, like when it does become like an insurgency situation, protesting isn't fucking that. Do you need to fucking have your, you know, a, a, a gun and bulletproof vest and a baton and a taser and a fucking sound cannon when you're giving a traffic ticket? When somebody makes a wrong left turn? Somebody's blinkers going off? Probably fucking not. So we got to compartmentalize this stuff. So that the militarized police aren't handing out tickets. And then when somebody reaches over for their driver's license, they go, whoa, and then they shoot them. Because they have PTSD again, uh, uh, towards the regular average citizen. Because, they're, because it's us versus them. Because that's what the system tells them to do. And because they have a lower IQ, they're not willing to understand any of that shit. Just this infinite fucking bullshit cycle that ha that happens. That's what we're fighting for. It's important to understand this. It's important to have conversations about this. And it's important to know why this anger from the people is justified. All right, folks. Uh, that is the end 
that is the end of this live stream. We're going to bring it to a close. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Actually, I forgot to do one thing. Hold on. Uh, we got comments. Mark Viola, comedian Mark Viola. Vicious circle goes round and round, never stops. That's what makes it vicious and a circle. Uh, he's right. That's what makes both of those things what they are. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's that's the problem with the system. Is the system is in, intended on being a vicious circle. And even the people that are protecting this this system are, are victims of the system itself, but they just don't understand that they're victims, so they attack other people. They're, they're being gaslit by the system that is in place, uh, which sucks. But like I said, uh, we're gonna bring this thing to it to it to a to a rousing close. Uh, if you watched this video, if you enjoyed this video, if you stuck around to the end, thank you so much for doing that. That's very appreciative. I really appreciate people that stick around top to bottom on these things, or just watch them later top to bottom. I know these things get long, uh, and uh, I tend to get kind of ranty and all that kind of shit. But uh, thank you guys uh, for for doing that. Uh, if you could hit that like button, hit the share button, get the word out about these sort of things. Um, uh, let's see, where do I want to start with, uh, some of the promo crap? Uh, I'll start with this. Um, like I posted earlier, I got to move my <laughs> head up on this. I'm donating a hundred percent of the ticket sales from the June 5th virtual citizen revolution, virtual stand-up comedy show to the Minnesota freedom fund. And then going forward, the rest of the shows in June, I'm donating 50% of all of the ticket sales. Uh, to the Minnesota Freedom Fund, which helps protesters that get arrested. And they're pretty much getting illegally arrested. So, uh, you know, just like the Minnesota bus drivers ain't going to fucking uh, transport arrested protesters, I'm going to try to help them out in whatever way that I can. I know a couple of other performers are also doing that sort of stuff, so I encourage you to see where they are. And if you have the ability to, please donate to them to it or donate directly to the Minnesota Freedom Fund, however you feel like you, you need to do this. But uh, Friday, June 5th, I'm going to be talking about the history of the Black Panthers. So if you enjoyed that section of the show, it's just going to be a whole bunch of uh, uh, comedy history lesson about, about that. Um, and then each show is different. So if you want to buy a ticket for every single one, uh, you totally can. And like I said, it's, it's, I'm, I'm going to ensure that it is going to a good cause as well. Um, I know Ron Placone and Graham Elwood are doing something tonight and I donated to that and I'm going to go watch my friends. I haven't, I haven't seen them, uh, perform in quite some time. So that should be fun, uh, to do. So, uh, please support the people that are supporting these causes, support your artists, um, that, uh, you know, are talking about important issues, uh, because this is the sort of shit you're not going to see on mainstream media or any sort of mainstream comedy network or any sort of mainstream corporate comedy club. This is, this is, you know, very much these community driven independent, uh, 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 venues are the only ones that are doing it. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about something for June, July, uh, I'm trying to figure out what I need to do for July, uh, for, for these citizen revolution comedy shows, but it would be awesome if you got some tickets and, uh, came hang out, uh, be rad to see some of you guys. Um, I'm dropping an album tomorrow. Uh, if you want to grab it, it's a dollar. Um, I'm mulling over whether I want to do a live stream talking about the process of the album or not. Um, but with everything going on, I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not, or if it feels self-indulgent or weird or I don't know. Um, leave a comment and I'll figure something out. Uh, if you pre-order the album on at midnight, you, you get a copy of it. The link is in, in the description and in the comment section as well. Um, if you want to donate to me there, you can go to my website and, and donate, uh, and become a sustaining member. You get free tickets to the, to the virtual shows and a bunch of other stuff. Um, you know, but I'd rather right now you donate more to, uh, um, I'd rather you donate to, to, to the freedom funds or any sort of other legal defense funds to um, help out protesters and activists that are out on the streets and mutual aid groups as well. So, uh, yeah. Oh, thank you, Jody. Jody says, fantastic. Thanks. Thanks for doing what you do. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, 
I thank you for watching and, and sharing and liking and, and all that stuff. Uh, that's very kind of you. Uh, yeah, it's been a heavy week. It's a, we're, we're, we're all kind of dealing with this stuff. So, um, please be good to each other. Please be understanding to each other. Right. Like I know there's a lot of, I expressed a lot of anger in this video itself. Um, and I'm trying to process all of it. And, and you guys are basically watching me process all of it as well. Uh, you know, if you have those moderate friends, help them out, give them, give them some explanations about what's going on and why this anger is justified. Um, because I don't think they, I don't think they understand. Um, take care of yourselves. Uh, take care of each other. Um, and if you do go to any of the protests and things get crazy, uh, be mindful of your surroundings, be mindful of each other. And if you don't feel comfortable being in a specific situation, look, I've, I felt guilty about leaving yesterday and I had to talk to a couple people about it. Um, you know, if, if that's not your role, that's not your role and that's okay. You'll find what your role is within the protest. Uh, if it's documenting, if it's being the medic, if it's being the person that hands out snacks or water, if it's making sure that, hey, these rogue people are getting away, let's pull them, pull them back so they don't do anything destructive. If that's your thing, then that's your thing. You don't need to set shit on fire. You don't need to go to battle with the cops. Other people are, uh, the warriors will do what the warriors do but we need other people in this society and you serve a role too. And you're important as well uh, because of the roles that you serve. So I um, just wanted to say that, you know, be, be good to each other um, and take care of yourself and the people around you. Uh, and, you know, solidarity, no justice, no peace, no violent police.